Advent is almost upon us. I know my Advent calendar is on the way to me in the mail, so I think it's time to jump into some Advent knitting options. Hello! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Virgin Lily, my channel all about knitting. Today is a pattern roundup video. I'm really excited for this one. I feel like I haven't filmed a pattern roundup in quite a while. If you see me looking down, I always knit while I'm filming these pattern roundup videos just because I'm not holding anything up to show you. It's all photos that I put on the screen after recording, so I gotta keep my hands busy. <laughs> but yeah, today is a pattern roundup video. We're starting off the Advent pattern series. I have a couple videos planned for this, um, and this first one here is going to be sweater patterns for Advent knitting. Sweater knitting for Advent is something that I think for some reason, I never really thought about until maybe this past year. I found a couple patterns that I thought would be really great for knitting with my advent calendar and it kind of just opened the floodgates and I've had a lot of fun looking for sweater patterns that will work for advent calendars. So before we jump on in to all of these patterns, there are a few places you can find me on the internet. The main one is birchandlilyfiber.com. You can also find me on Instagram at birch.and.lily and everything I talk about today and all the links to where you can find those things and all of my social media is always down below in the description. So I have sorted these patterns out kind of by style of pattern in a way. I have some cardigans, some pullovers, and I do actually have one tank pattern as well. So I thought let's start with cardigans and we'll move on from there. I also will have all of the patterns time stamped down below on the video along with links. So if you want to kind of jump around you can do that as well. So let's get me scooched on over here so I have room to put photos up on the screen and jump on in to cardigans. The first one I've pulled here is called Bohemian Scrapsody. This is a pattern by Winter's Weather Knits. This is a Erin weight pattern, but before you get worried, because I know advent calendars are usually fingering or DK weight, this pattern achieves its Erin weight by holding yarn double, triple, whatever, whatever you need to hit that weight of yarn. The gauge for this one is 14 stitches by 22 rows. That will give you a four inch square of knitting. And it comes in sizes extra small through 5XL. You're looking at about a 33 to 63 inch bust, and that is about 84 to 161 centimeters. Ease for this one is about four to six inches or 10 to 15 centimeters and it is a huge squishy blanket cardigan. That's the best way I can describe it. Maybe also I think I've heard it called a cocoon cardigan before but it's basically just one big huge blanket with sleeves. So like I said the yarn weight for this pattern is achieved by holding yarn um, double, triple, quadruple, whatever you need to get your Erin weight and your gauge and the fabric that you like. So there's a lot of room for play with this one. Obviously you're not going to see all of your advent mini skeins individually, but I think if you have a calendar where the colors play really well together, it would be super fun to just take all of them and marl them together and see what you achieve and get a really cohesive piece overall. Plus it's going to be super squishy and warm for those winter months that are coming up. It is knit from side to side. So because of that, the pattern does state that instead of your stitch gauge being super important, your row gauge is quite important. So I guess as opposed to paying attention to the 14 stitches like you normally would, you really want to pay attention to those 22 rows when you're doing your gauge swatch and kind of pick your needle size based off of that. So with that being said, with it being knit side to side, there is a little bit of seaming. You are going to have to seam your arms together, but it's just with mattress stitch. It's not too complicated. Once you figure it out and you get going, I find mattress stitch moves really, really quickly. There are also options to choose to do a button band with buttons or a button band without. So if you're looking for something really big and squishy and cozy to knit this winter, I think that this 
might be a great option for your advanced games. Now on the complete opposite spectrum of the Bohemian Rhapsody cardigan, we have the Wild Autumn cardigan. This pattern is by Abby E. Knits. Now I will say it did not provide a ton of information on the Ravelry project page, but just looking at the photos, I know that this one is going to work great. It is knit with DK weight yarn, but you could also just hold your fingering weight mini skeins double to achieve the correct fabric on this one. Gauge is 22 stitches by 26 rows to get your four inch square. It does come in eight sizes, anywhere from a bust measurement of 32 to 60 inches or 81.25 to 152.5 centimeters. There is no ease stated on the Ravelry project page, but looking at photos, I would assume it's anywhere from like one to two inches to even possibly having a little bit of negative ease. I don't own the pattern myself, so I'm sure if you decide to purchase and knit this one that it will give you that information. This beautiful, beautiful color work cardigan is knit from the bottom up with set in sleeves. I think you could use the mini skeins in your advent calendar for all of the color work on this one and then pick a main color to use for your sleeves and button band and hem on it. Or depending on the size you're knitting, you might even be able to get away with your Christmas Day Advent skein being your sleeves and button band. The color work on this one gives a really bohemian sort of vibe. I think it's really beautiful and I think it leaves a lot of room to play around with color and use your advent mini skeins throughout. The final cardigan that I have chosen for this video is the Pressed Flowers cardigan by Amy Christoffers. This one is not explicitly an advent pattern, but I think there are some ways that you could tweak knitting it to make it work perfectly for your advent calendar. It does call to be knit with sport weight yarn, but the gauge that it gives you also lends itself quite well to fingering weight yarn. It is a gauge of 24 stitches by 44 rows. So I think if you want to go ahead and use fingering weight yarn for it from your calendar, you're going to have no problem. Just do a gauge swatch. I know they suck, but... <laughs> If you do a gauge swatch, you should be just fine to knit the pressed flowers cardigan out of your advent. This pattern comes in eight sizes, anywhere from a 37 inch to a 74 inch bust, or 94 to 185 centimeters. It calls for about six inches of positive ease. That's about 15.25 centimeters, and it is another beautiful color work pattern, but this one is mosaic color work, so you're not going to be using more than one skein of yarn at a time. It's just created using slit stitches, so it's a really mindless, fun pattern for your advent knitting, I think. Obviously, you have to pay a little bit of attention, but not as much as a color work pattern. So the way I think that you could adjust this one to use with your advent calendar is, first of all, to lengthen it a little bit. The model in the photos is wearing a more cropped length cardigan, but I think you could add a good couple more rows of flower motifs to give you a little bit more room to play with your advent skeins. And then what I would do is just make each flower row. You can see there are rows of flowers that run from left to right across the cardigan. So each of those rows you could do in a different advent mini skein. You could also even do multiple colors per flower row. I think you could play with it a lot and come up with something that you really love and that's the whole point of advent, right? So pattern construction wise, the flowers on this one are charted so you will have to be able to read charts. It's worked from the bottom up so like I said it's super easy to add some length to it. Just add a couple more repeats of that flower motif and you've easily got some more length if you'd like it. And yeah, use those different mini skeins for the flowers. Have fun, play. Who cares if you have a ton of ends to weave in? It'll be worth it in the long run. So moving on to pullovers, I think this is where some of my favorite patterns are in this video. The first one I pulled is the Ingen sweater. This is a pattern by Inga Semingren, and it is a pattern that calls for sport or fingering weight yarn. You're looking at a gauge of about 19 stitches by 38 rows. That is a little loose in my opinion, for even sport and fingering weight, but 
do a gauge swatch, figure out how it works. Maybe you have to hold your fingering weight to mini skeins double to achieve gauge is what it is, but um, totally workable. You're looking at sizes from extra small to 5XL in this pattern, anywhere from a 34 and a half inch to a 61 and a half inch bust or 88 to 156 centimeters. The pattern does state that you want to knit this with little to no ease as it is a yoked sweater so too much ease on a yoke sweater tends to not look terribly great. You want a nice fitted look to the top of the sweater. It is worked top down in the round for that yoked construction. This one is similar in a way to the pressed flowers cardigan in that it is also mosaic knitting. You're using slip stitches to achieve that beautiful triangle detail that it has throughout the sweater. You're gonna need a main color for this one as well, but even just grabbing some undyed fingering weight or DK weight yarn, depending on what you need to get the gauge would be beautiful. And I think that really lets the colors of your advent calendar shine then as well. They're not bogged down then by the addition of another color for your main color. They really get to stand out and you can see all of the fun colors play throughout your sweater. Probably one of my favorite patterns in this video is the Whidbey sweater. This is a pattern by Wool and Pine Designs and it is really unique. It is knit up in DK weight yarn with a gauge of 18 stitches by 26 rows. It has 10 women's sizes but just wait. There's also children's and men's sizes included in this pattern. I've only written down the women's sizes here, uh, but if you go onto the Ravelry pattern page, they do have a link to get the extensive range of sizes for children and men's as well. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely take a look at the link down below. But like I said, I just pulled women's sizes for this video for the sake of time um, and ease of taking in information. I feel like if I just start throwing out a whole bunch of numbers, no one's going to remember anyway. So it was easier just to do the women's. But yeah, like I said, the link is down below to all of these patterns so you can grab the rest of the information if you so desire. So for women's, there are 10 sizes, like I said, anywhere from a 30 inch to a 66 inch bust. That's about 76 to 167 centimeters. So the fun thing about this sweater is that you could technically start knitting it now. Uh, the reason being because it is just a plain raglan sweater, a plain compound raglan sweater. Um, compound raglan, as a side tangent, is something I recently just learned about as a phrase. I've knit compound raglans before, but I didn't realize that there was a difference. So a raglan, a normal raglan, is evenly spaced increases on both the body and the sleeve portions of your raglan, but a compound raglan um, intersperses those throughout, not evenly, so you're increasing at different rates for the body and the sleeve so that you get a really nice curve and a more... A better fit to your raglan basically. So this is a compound raglan sweater pattern. So like I said, you can start knitting this sweater now because all of your mini skeins are going to be used to weave on your sweater after it's knit. So if you look at the photos I have on the screen here, you can see some of the sweaters have woven onto just the raglan sleeve portion. Some have woven onto the whole body. Some have woven just onto the body portion. There are so many ways that you can play with your advent skeins on this sweater. And the nice thing is you don't have to worry if they're fingering weight skeins or DK weight skeins because they have nothing to do with your gauge. You're just using them to weave and play and decorate your sweater. So I don't know. I just think it's really unique. There was nothing else that I saw on Ravelry like this when I was looking for advent patterns. And I think it's a fun way to get excited for advent too, because you can start your sweater now and then by the time you start opening all of your advent skeins you're already ready with a almost finished sweater that then you can just weave all of those skeins into and decorate. So wool and pine patterns are full of information. This one is no exception. It has all sorts of fun different ways to show you how to weave those mini skeins on there. It has video tutorials great pattern and I think it's a really unique way to use your advent mini skeins. This next pattern is another one where it's not explicitly a advent pattern but I think you could easily turn it into one. This is the Shocking Stripes pattern by Tori Yu. 
It is a sport and or fingering weight yarn pattern. I think you could totally get away with fingering weight yarn for this one as well. You're going to have to choose a main color for this one. So again, I would go with something neutral or a black or a gray. I guess black and gray are neutral, but something, something neutral and fun, unless you know that maybe for example, your advent calendar is themed around the color purple, and then you could pick something that you think would go well with the purple. Anyways, you're going to need a main color for this one, and then where you can really play with all of your advent skeins is in the stripes. So, like I said, sport or fingering weight yarn it calls for a gauge of 23 stitches by 32 rows. There are nine sizes available, anywhere from a 36 to a 68 inch bust or a 91 to 173 centimeter bust. It calls for about 68 inches of positive ease or about 15 to 20 centimeters. And it is worked top down as a circular yoke with a beautiful squishy folded collar. Like I said, I think you can really play with your advent skeins in the stripes here. The whole sweater is covered in this really beautiful knit pearl striped texture. And I think you could either do each stripe fully as one individual advent skein, or you could even have stripes within the skeins. Like looking at, like if I look at this photo here, sorry, I've got to look quite closely because it's a little small, but it looks like one, two, there's about five sections within each stripe. Like the, the stripes are each composed of five sections of the knit and purl texture. So you could even do multiple colors within each individual stripe. I think there's a lot of ways you can play with those stripes and really make something that's unique and fun. And I don't know, I think, it would be fun to even just save all of your advent skeins until Christmas and then lay them all out and figure out how you want them to stripe or just throw them in there as you open them up and see what beautiful palette you get out of the sweater. Price patterns are very well written as well. I've tested quite a few of them to be honest <laughs> um, and I know that this one would be really easy to follow and really easy to customize to your own liking and they're super size inclusive. All of the patterns in this video are today. Today I try really hard to make an effort to pick patterns that are size inclusive and that everyone can knit, and this one is no exception. The next pattern I've pulled is another one where you can do some really fun marling. This is the Stay Pull by Park Williams, and this one calls for bulky white yarn, again created by holding strands of yarn together. Something I loved about reading the Ravelry page for this one is that it gave you options of what you could hold together to get the correct gauge and it does say that holding four skeins or four strands of fingering weight yarn together should give you the called for bulky weight. So I think that's again a really fun way to mix and match all of your advent skeins together and get something really unique and marled. I love the look of marling and knitting. I think it gives such a pretty squishy texture. So gauge wise on this bulky weight sweater you're looking at about 14 stitches by 19 rows so it's going to knit up really really fast. Fast. Sizes are from extra small through 5XL. This gives you a bust measurement anywhere from 32 to 64 inches or 81.25 to 162.5 centimeters. Calls for about 1 to 5 inches of positive ease. That's about 2.5 to 12.75 centimeters. And it is just a top down raglan. It's a really classic fitting sweater, but I think it's fun to see and think of all the different possibilities of how you could hold your advent skeins together to achieve this sweater. It does have, I believe, cropped and full length versions available. So depending on what you're looking for, there's a lot of options and ways that you can play. The next two patterns coming up are in my top three along with the Whidbey sweater. This next one here is the Sea Glass sweater. It's another one by Wool and Pine. This one is a DK weight sweater. It calls for a gauge of 20 stitches by 24 rows. And again, you can hold your fingering weight advent skeins double. Maybe you have a DK weight advent. You can use it that way. I've seen people knit this sweater with fingering weight yarn as well. You're just going to have to do a little bit of math 
math to adjust measurements and stuff, but it is a very customizable pattern. It comes in 12 sizes, anywhere from a 33 to a 68 inch bust. That's about 84 to 173 centimeters. And it calls for about five to eight inches of positive ease. That's about 12.75 to 20.25 centimeters. Like I said, there is endless room to play with this one. You can switch colors every row if you want. You could keep one main color working throughout and just switch your contrast color every couple rows. There are so many different ways that you can play with this pattern. It is color work, so you're going to have to be familiar with the concept of color work, but it isn't complicated color work. It's just a one by one color work. So you're alternating your two colors of yarn every other stitch. This is a seamless top down sweater. It is yoked, worked in the round, so there's no seaming or anything like that. And as an added bonus, you also get the sea glass hat pattern for free if you purchase this one on Ravelry. So you can play around with a sweater and then make yourself a matching hat with any advent leftovers that you might have. The final pattern in what I would call my top three advent sweater patterns is aptly named my favorite adventure. This is a pattern from Dragon Horde Yarns. It does call for fingering weight yarn with a gauge of 28.5 stitches by 32 rows. It comes in 11 sizes anywhere from a 31 to a 67 inch bust. That is a about a 78.75 to 170 centimeter bust. Calls for about two to four inches or five to 10 centimeters of positive ease. Something really unique about this pattern that literally none of the other ones can boast is that Tristan, the designer, sat down and took a lot of time to make sure that literally every size all the way through the 11 sizes, will not need more than 20 grams of each color of yarn to knit this sweater up. So there are little variations throughout the pattern for the different sizes. They're all stated on the Ravelry page, but you can rest assured that no matter what size you're knitting, you're not going to need more than 20 grams of each skein to finish up this sweater. You are obviously going to need a main color as well. Again, may I recommend a gray or a cream? <laughs> I think that is a really pretty choice, or if you're brave and like knitting with black yarn, I think black would look gorgeous as well. So the color work on this one is very similar to the sea glass sweater, but the added bonus of knowing that you're not going to use any more than 20 grams of each of your mini skeins that you're not going to run out on a sleeve or something is really wonderful. I think um, I think that takes a lot of dedication to sit down and do the math and figure that out for every single size. So I really commend Tristan for that. And I think it's so pretty. I own this one. And depending on what colors I'm getting out of my advent calendar, I'm either going to use it for this sweater or possibly a blanket. I'm not 100% sure yet, we'll have to see, but this one is definitely high on my list. It is a top-down raglan sweater that is knit in the round, and it's just beautiful, and I think really deserves to be highlighted in this video because of all the work that Tristan put into it to make it size inclusive. We are already somehow to our final pattern. Like I said, I do have one tank pattern that I pulled for this video. I just I couldn't keep it out of my mind when I was thinking of patterns to put in here. So I know it's not the most seasonally appropriate garment, but I just think there's so many different ways you could play with your advent skeins on this that it was worth including in the video. This is the Slanty Stripes Tank by Emily Curtis, and it is a intarsia tank top pattern. It is knit out of fingering weight yarn with a gauge of 25 stitches by 34 rows to get your four inch square. There are nine sizes included in this pattern, anywhere from a 36 to a 68 inch bust or about 90 to 170 centimeters. You're looking at about four to eight inches of positive ease. That's about 10 to 20 centimeters. And you're also going to have a beautiful V-neck construction on this one. Now that I think about it, it's actually the only pattern in this whole video that has a v-neck construction. I think, let me see. Uh, I guess, nope, technically the cardigans are v-necks, but 
other than that, other than the cardigans, this is the only pattern I've included that has a v-neck. I love a v-neck construction. I think there's something so flattering about it, but yeah, this is a really cute tank. Like I said, it's knit with intarsia, so you do have to knit the front and the back of the garment flat to achieve that and then seam them together, but mattress stitch is not that hard. I've done it a couple times this year and I'm shocked how much I don't hate it. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Everyone tells me that I shouldn't like mattress stitch, but I didn't find it to be that bad. There's tons of ways that you can play with this one. Emily actually includes on her website a template that you can sit down and play with color on. It's got a blank coloring page for this pattern and you can input all sorts of different colors and play around and see what you come up with. So as you can tell from the photos I'm sure I'm putting on the screen, it gets its name from the little slanted sections in the stripes and that is what gives you all of that room to play with the color and to have so much fun. Emily's patterns are really well written as well. I can vouch for them. I've knit a lot of them and I don't know. I think this would be really fun. And maybe even if you're feeling adventurous, you could add sleeves on. It doesn't look like it would be that hard. You would just pick up stitches around the armholes on this and you could put some sleeves on too if you felt like it. So there are some options to play with it in that way as well, but I think it was too good not to include in this video. I should also state quickly, when you're seaming up the sides, there's the option to leave a split hem. That's what the pattern calls for. And I love a split hem, so there's also that as well. It saves you a little bit of seaming too, because you don't have to seam up in your ribbing. So with that tank pattern, that brings me to the end of this video. Hopefully I have enabled you and given you some ideas to do some sweater knitting for your advent this year, instead of the usual shawls or blankets or socks that we usually see from most people, I think, at least around Advent. I always see a lot of shawls, but I think we need to do some more sweaters, so hopefully I've enabled you to do that this year. Like I said, this is part of a series, so I am going to be filming, I think, at least one more video that will go up in a couple weeks of shawl patterns for Advent. I might even squish it together and do shawls and socks. We'll see. I haven't <laughs> fully decided yet, but I do know that there are a lot of patterns out there that I can pull and get another one of these videos together for you so that you can prepare for your Advent knitting. If you liked what you saw today, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. It really helps the channel out and it gets these videos out there to other people on YouTube so they can enjoy them as well. I hope I will see you next week for my regular podcast episode where I talk all about what I have been working on over the past couple weeks. But for now, take care and I will see you next week. Bye! <music>